So I've let the uh, lines on the master cylinder sit overnight with mystery oil on them. I'm gonna see what happens now when I, when I try to loosen them up. You have to use a flare wrench, of course, on these because they round over real easy. And it's loose, of course, but the whole line is spinning. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but when I put this on, see how the whole thing's spinning? That's not good. So that means that I'll snap off this line as I unscrew the fitting, even though I've got the fitting loose from the master cylinder. So there's a way to, to try to fix this. The idea is you have to separate the inside of the line from the fitting. One steel, one brass, so they naturally kind of fuse together over time. But what you do um, is you heat the fitting to try to expand it just a bit so that the line pops free when you spin it. Um, you got to be careful with this. Um, there's rubber inside the master cylinder. There's oil and such around here, so you got to be super, super careful. Um, but it can be done. I would not do this on a master cylinder that you wish to keep. But this one is completely shot, so I don't really mind if I damage it in any way by heating it up. But the idea is don't heat the master cylinder. Don't heat the line. Aim the heat at the fitting. Get the fitting not red hot, but you know, you'll, you'll notice it, I'll show you. And then shut the heat off and quickly go to it and see if you can break it free. Um, I'm not sure if it's gonna work or not. I hope it does, because I don't feel like changing these lines, but it wouldn't be the end of the world. They only run down to here, down to this junction block there. So they don't go that far. But these are the factory lines, I'd like to keep them. Um, so we'll see how that goes. I have to get the uh, the torch out next. I'm going to use propane rather than map gas. Map gas will work, but it's it's pretty hot gas. So I'm going to start with propane. Okay, propane's going. Just a real simple propane setup. I'm just aim the tip of the flame at the fitting. This is, I'm not sure why this has such a long flame on it. Um, I don't really like that. Let me see if I can get this flame to get a little bit shorter. Yeah, that's better. That's better. A little more control over that way. Oh, this looks cool. I can look that cool in real life. But I'm just heating up the fitting. Not the master cylinder, not the line. Now they're all going to get hot, of course. But my intention is to expand the fitting so that when I crank on it, it'll pop loose from the line. How long this takes really matters on a bunch of factors. It matters on the type of gas you're using, propane or map gas, whatever. It matters on how good you are at holding it against the fitting, which obviously I'm not very good because it keeps moving around from holding the phone. And you know, the master cylinder is a giant heat sink. So as much as I'm putting heat right on the line, the master cylinder is dissipating it. This propane might not be hot enough. I may have to go to map gas. Just for the heck of it, I'm going to give it a try right now and, and see if it's any better. I doubt it, but it's worth a try. So I'm just going to put my wrench on it and give it a, a quick movement. Oh yeah, yeah, it's, it's moving. It's moving. See that? It's moving and the line is not moving. Oh, oh, no, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. I think I just broke the line. Oh, crap. Okay, yeah, yeah, I broke the line. So my experiment failed. Um, okay, well, I'm gonna try it on the back one so I don't have to replace two lines. And maybe I'll just reflare this guy. 
rather than replace it. Um, the back one, the, the, uh, the fitting's a little little bigger, so maybe it'll work better. And I'm also going to use the map gas. This propane's not working for me. All right, now we're going to try it with the map gas. The map gas is way hotter. Again, be super careful with this. So you're not hitting the flame anywhere else in the It's just really, really hot. Not sure about this one either. It's moving the same way the other one did. But I do believe this one's going to work. I think I've got it loose enough that it's... Yeah, yeah, this one's going to work. Okay, cool. So I saved one of them, not both. Um, they're going to be hot for a while, so make sure you don't touch them. I need to follow this guy down see where it goes and either replace it or reflare it um, probably have to try to salvage that fitting I don't know if I have one that size but anyway you get the idea the next step is to take the master cylinder off that bolt and that bolt I'm taking a break from the master cylinder um, let it cool down I'm gonna try to get some of these lug nuts off these things are tight, fused, fused, tight. I've already tried these a few times. And this one I've got a little bit loose. Miracle. Miracle of miracles. Yeah. That one's not working too well. Yeah, let's try this one. Okay, no, I got this one. Two out of five so far. Whoa, that one was really easy. That means I got three out of five. That's pretty cool and very unexpected. Okay, so I only have two left. This is 13 16. I'm gonna grab a socket. 
I'm going to try this. What I really need is a pipe. I might be able to get these off with a pipe. I don't know that I can do it with this. That's four. One more. This one doesn't want to go. Instead, it wants to kill me. Come on. Oh. Oh. Got it. <laughs> Got it. Now, there might be some of you saying, why isn't he using an impact gun? Because I can't find it. It's somewhere in my garage and I can't find it. So I'm doing it the way it used to be done when men were men, <laughs> which is why it's so hard for me. <laughs> All right, so this wheel's loose. All right, let's see what we got under there. Well, I haven't jacked it up yet, so I'm not gonna take it off right now. Probably do that tomorrow, but it's loose. Only three more wheels to go. The master cylinder's out. See, there was a nut there and a bolt here. It's not good on Ford. You have to actually have a wrench on either side to get these out, unlike GMs. I'm not sure if it was factory like that or if someone messed with it over the years, because that doesn't seem like a very good design. Anyway, here it is. And as you can see, the front port isn't leaking at all. It's completely plugged up. The rear port's leaking a little bit, but I took this off. This is the rubber boot that goes on the end, and look at that. That crystallization is moisture. So, this thing's in really bad shape, really bad. Um, finding a master cylinder for this truck has proven to be very, very difficult. Um, I've got one, but I'm not sure it's going to work. Hopefully it will. But uh, the actual part number for this you can't find anywhere. So we'll see how that goes. Give you an idea of what we're looking at here. Almost completely black, is full of sludge. Look at that. I don't know if I've ever seen a master cylinder that bad. I mean, this is really, really bad. So I'm gonna drain it out. Um, obviously, I don't think this is savable. I wasn't able to find a rebuild kit for it. Wow. Wow. It's almost like someone put dirt in there. Very, very bad. I'm hoping the master cylinder I've got works. Because if it doesn't, this one's going to be tough to rebuild. But we'll see shortly. I got the line out. The one that was coming from the combo valve here all the way down to the piece that broke on the master cylinder. Now I'm gonna uh, cut it and reflare it. You have to be careful here because, see how pitted that is? I'll wait for the camera to focus. There you go. 
you can't use that. It's too short. It's not safe. Um, so I'm just going to cut all that out. I'm going to actually cut down here um, where it's the, the tube's in good shape. And then I'll just bend it once I get it back into the truck. So to cut it, use a tubing cutter, just like this. It's a little guy. Um, you know, they make cheap ones of these, really crappy cheap ones. Don't get them. Um, go for the highest quality that you can afford on these. It's not a lot of money, and uh, it's well worth it for an even cut. The way this thing works is there's two rollers inside the cutter. See, there's one of the rollers right there. Make sure you get the tube in between the two rollers, not off to the side or in the back, or it won't cut right. And right here is a blade, right there. And you tighten it up just so it's snug, and then you start to twist it. And every turn or so, you just tighten it up a little more, every turn or so, a little more, and what you're doing is you're cutting it, cutting the, the tube. Now, if you get a cheap one of these, it might walk, meaning as you're cutting, it actually moves back and forth and completely screws up your cut and ruins your line. Again, a good reason to use a good quality one. It's not hard. If this is super hard to spin, you've got the knob too tight. The idea is not to crush the line, it's to cut it. can't see it here but I can see I've got a real nice cut going on here and every turn or so I'm just tightening the knob till it's snug again looks like it's almost through because it's there you go see that really nice cut now Here's the other end here. Really nice cut. I'm going to uh, champ for the hole just a little bit. Um, make sure that there's no filings in the way or anything like that. All good. And then it comes time to flare it. I'm going to show you how I flare it. So there are a lot of ways to flare fittings, but I've always wanted to do them as professionally as possible since it's brakes we're talking about. So this is called a uh, tubing flare tool. Um, it looks very exotic. It's not, um, but it's well worth the money. This was not cheap. I don't usually buy super expensive tools, but this was not cheap. Basically what you do, you put this in a vise to hold it. You select the size out of the kit of the brake line you're using. So it's 3 eighths, 5 sixteenths, quarter inch, and in this case, I'm using 3 sixteenths line. So you take these dies, and you put them in here with the 3 sixteenths numbers facing that way. Take this thing and rotate it down. And then, before you tighten this up, you take the line here, make absolutely sure your fitting's on first. I can't tell you how many times I've done this and flared a nice flare and not had the fitting on it. I'm not going to be able to do this with the phone in my hand, but I'll show you how. You put this in the middle. Yeah, this is a bit tricky. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let me tighten this up a bit, just a little bit, so it kind of holds the dies in a little bit. You put the line in, the line's got to be a straight piece, obviously. This, this line's pretty long, so it's, it's, it's really hard to get this on, on the phone. I might not be able to do it. Let me come back when I've got it in place. 
Okay, as you can see, the line's in, and the end is sticking out. So how do you know how much to let stick out? Well, let the tool figure that out for you. What you do is this thing rotates, and it's got a flat edge. Just roll the flat edge to where it's pressing against, or will be pressing against your, your line, and then just pull this handle here towards it. And it, until it stops, and now you know the line is in the right spot. So you can tighten this down. You don't want this, you don't want this line moving. So tighten this down good. Okay. So everything is where it needs to be. Now, here, you got a bunch of settings with the correct type. This is a double flare, so you need to actually use it twice. So you see here, you got three sixteenths, so we're going to rotate that towards the line. Then what I'm going to do is pull on the handle to um, start the flare. It's going to force this black piece here into the line, which is now right here and flush with the end of the dies. Um, you got to pull this handle pretty hard, so I'm going to I'm going to uh, push hold the phone, push the phone down, and then get back to it. Okay, first part of the flare is done. You can't really see it, um, but I will show you in a minute. So then, so this was 3 16 Now you have to make the second part of the flare. So the other setting here is also for 3 16 but it's yellow. You start with green, you end up with yellow. You do the same thing. You take this handle and you pull it to a Jew hard until it stops. All right, now I've done that. We should be done. Let's find out. So you, then you unscrew this to loosen it up so everything can come apart. Take the line out. And look what we have there. Boy, this, the focus isn't working too good, but look at that. Perfect flare. Should, this should fit right up good against it, which it does. We're ready to rock and roll. This came out real good. Real good. Wish the cam would focus on it, you could see. Okay, so this is done. I decided not to try to rebuild the old master cylinder yet. I'm gonna try the new one, see if it works. It's not the exact right part number, so I have to try it. Um, but what needs to be done is something called bench bleeding. Bench bleeding is usually done on a bench and it's bleeding the air out of the master cylinder, not the actual system in the truck, the master cylinder. Since this is manual brakes, it's super simple to do it once it's installed in the truck. There's no need to do it on the bench and then make a mess when you're trying to put this in. So what you do, you put these tubes into the ports on the master cylinder. Fill the master cylinder up, and then you're just going to press the brake pedal, and the air will come out of the master cylinder and flow back in to here, into the reservoir, and then pick up fluid on its way back. And by doing that, it, uh, it evacuates the air from the system. Um, so you want to make sure there's enough fluid in here so that you don't introduce more air when you're doing this. Okay, so I'm just gonna go inside. And press the brake pedal. I don't know if you can hear that, but this bubbles. Okay, now I don't hear any bubbles anymore. So it's blood. It's not simple. It's not simple. Okay, now it's time to hook up the lines. 
one thing I have to deal with with every rescue I've ever done is blown brake lines. When a vehicle sits for a long time, the brake lines rust out. And uh, this truck is no different. This line, and for the camera to focus right there. It's, uh, it's a little bit dented in, and it's just rusted enough to have a hole in it. This is uh, a very long line. It goes all the way from the master cylinder to halfway down the bed. <clears throat> it's super long. And this is the exact same line that blew on the red 72 that I rescued a while back. The exact same one. Um, these lines go across the frame on the truck and then they dip down a little bit for whatever reason. The uh, brake line actually goes like this. So it dips down and where it dips down, it rusts out. Um, not sure why Ford did that, but apparently it's a, it must be a common problem because it's now the second time for me. So um, there's a few things I did. Um, you could cut this out, reflare the ends, and uh, put a connector in. Um, there's nothing wrong with doing that, but on an old line, you take the risk of problems with other areas of the line blowing or leaks. If you look at this section here, it's pretty pitted. Uh, see that where I've sanded it? You can see the pits where the rust is. I, I don't want to use this line. It's, it's too old, it's too short, but it's really, really long. So what do you do about that? What I've done is I purchased this line off of uh, Amazon. I think the company is called Four Lifetimes or something like that. I've never used this before. But it's, uh, it's 3 16 like I need, and it's 25 feet, which is more than I need. And it, it's cool. I didn't know this, but it comes with a bag full of connectors, which is real nice. Uh, always good to have these things around. They're not brass, but they'll do. And uh, I think one of the connectors I can use here, <clears throat> the factory Ford piece where it goes into the combo valve, that's a huge connector for a 3 16 line. Now, I can reuse this if I need to just by cutting the line and taking this off, but I'd rather not. Um, I'd rather use a new one, and it looks like this kit will have one. So, next step, <clears throat> I've already showed you how to use this to flare the lines. So, I'm going to flare the line at the big connector side, then get underneath the truck and see just how long the piece has to be. Given that this piece is 25 feet, I don't need it all, but I don't know exactly how much I need. So I'm on to that now. So I've got the uh, back line out as well. This is the back line. Goes all the way from the junction block, all the way up to halfway up the bed. And I'm preparing the new line. This stuff is uh, very interesting. It's pretty flexible. You can bend it with your hands. So it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be easy to go in. I'm going to come in from the very back and run it all the way forward. This is my connection in the front that I just made with the flaring tool. And I'll come all the way back, figure out how much I need, um, cut it, and then flare it and uh, hook it all up, should do it. So I've got the new piece bent out in approximately the same way. It's actually pretty close to the same way the old line is. All the way down to the end. I'm gonna cut it, flare it, with the 3 16 flare and then install it. The factory Ford piece is actually a two piece. It's got this connector in the middle. I don't know why, um, but there's no need for me to recreate that. So I'm doing it all in one piece. So I got the brake line in, looks real good. Doesn't appear to be leaking, but everything's so full of air. It's hard to tell yet. 
Got the brake drum off, it was no problem. The uh, brake shoes are in really good shape. Um, there's quite a bit of cobwebs and stuff in here. This wheel cylinder, it doesn't look original to me. Um, I've got new ones, but this one really does not look bad. Um, <clears throat> based on, on peeling the rubber boots back, it looks almost new in there. But I'm willing to bet that the uh, bleeder screw in back won't come out. So if it doesn't, then I'll just swap the whole thing. Um, but we'll see. That's next step. I'm going to see if I can get the bleeder screw loose. Well, I'm surprised. The bleeder came right out. It's a 10 millimeter wrench to take it out. And as you can see, that hole is usually, if there's rust inside the, the wheel cylinder, that hole is plugged. It's open. So this leads me to believe that this wheel cylinder is not bad. Um, so I'm going to clean this up just a little bit, put it back in, and see if I can get some air out of the system. So the uh, driver's side was a real bear to get off because the e-brake is stuck on, the handbrake. Um, so basically I had to force it off and have to do a, some repairs to these pins that hold everything together when I'm done. But uh, because the, the brake was stuck on, um, you can see that this, this, uh, hold on one second. Let me get a screwdriver here. But this wheel cylinder that I've got in my hand was pushed out a little bit, actuated basically, and it shot. Um, even if it wasn't actuated, it might be shot, but look at that. It's, uh, hold on, this is, a, this is a bad picture here. This is just shot. See how far out the piston is, and this thing is it's junk. But got a brand new one, which is great. Right here in the package, so that's going in next. Very simple to remove and install these. Basically, it's two two bolts, right there and right there. You put it in um, the right, the correct way, um, and this one I think. The bolts are, yeah, the bolts are up top. Bleeder down below. Now here's the bleeder screw. Put these two bolts in and uh, it's installed. A couple of minutes later, the new one's in. Now I need to figure out what I'm gonna do about this emergency brake being stuck on. All back together. Well, these Fords are a little different than GM. The emergency brake setup and the brake adjustment setup's a little different. This weird thing here is for the adjust, auto adjust. Uh, what I did was I just pulled the uh, parking brake cable out for now. It's it's stuck badly, so I just pulled it out and uh, I'm going to soak it in mystery oil for a few days. That should free it up. But I want to get this thing together for now. It's starting to starting to get late in the day. All right, wheels are on, brakes are done. Since this has manual brakes, it doesn't have to run to see how how the brakes are. And, you know, they, they seem real good. Um, the left front wheel is locked up, so <clears throat> I think the caliper's stuck. So that's the next task at hand, um, but I'm not tackling that today. But I'm pretty happy. There's no leaks. I got a super hard pedal. Um, the right amount of pedal travel. I can, I can hear the brakes engaging when I push the pedal, so all good. Um, once I get the front wheel freed up, I might be able to take this thing for a ride. Enjoy.